Okay, so we'll now do a couple of sample problems regarding this moment of a force. In this sample problem 3.4, we have four types or four situations of um, almost similar. I mean, the two figures are similar with some variations on the positioning of the loadings uh, or the type of the loadings. Right, so our goal right here is just to simply build up our skills um, or at least we can get a feeling on how to compute this moment in a scalar analysis right so we're not gonna do a vector notation yet so that means what we want is just the magnitude the equivalent magnitude of the of the moment and as well as the direction but uh, I mean in terms of of illustrating yes we can we can determine the direction but we're not gonna do a vector notation yet right so it says here calculate the moment about point O or the following figures so first figure is this and let's assume that we have this X and Y axis right so here's our X and here's our Y axis right, so find the moment at O produced by this force and we call that moment moment is just simply force times the distance right so moment at O in this case so moment at O is just simply the force what's the force this is 2.5 kilonewtons right 2.5 kilonewtons and Recall that this distance must be perpendicular, right? perpendicular distance. So the perpendicular distance is simply 1.2. And therefore, our answer is 2.5 times 1.2. This is equal to 3, 3 kilonewton meters. Right, next is this one. So in this case, we have the same length. That's right, 1.2 meters. So 1.2 meters, but the loading is at 0 0.3 from uh, from point S, right? And the loading or the force is at some angle, 60 degrees from the horizontal. So therefore, if that's going to be the case, then that means th that that it can be something like this so probably right so that's going to be the component right so this is 1.6 sine 60 and this one This one is 1.6 cosine 60. Right, so um, that's the the component along the x. This is fx. This is fy. And uh, we'll just write for now fx and fy. So here's our fy, and here's our fx, and here's our total F right so um, if we can see here that the force component that produces moment is the FY because it has a perpendicular distance of so if this is 0 0.3 this is 1.2 then the remaining distance is 0 0.9 right so only FY the FX does not produce any moment because it doesn't have any perpendicular distance right, so take note of that so therefore mo is equal to let's write here right, so mo is equal to so the fy which is what is fy that is 1.6 sine 60 
right so that's our force in kilonewtons and the distance is from point O to um, to Fy that is 0 0.9 right so that's gonna be 1.6 times sine 60 times 0 0.9 So this is 1.25. It's approximating 1.25 kilonewton meter. And so the direction is positive because I mean that's our assumption, default assumption. Clockwise direction, uh, I mean clockwise moment is positive uh, unless otherwise stated. Right. So that's going to be uh, positive. But if we want to take the moment at point S. So at point S, if this is our positive direction, then at point S, this force will, will produce counterclockwise, right? Counterclockwise with respect to S. So therefore, that's going to be negative. So our force is 1.6 sine 60 and the distance from point S to Fy that's 0 0.3 right so that's going to be our moment and again the the fx component will um, the fx component does not produce a moment because it doesn't have any perpendicular distance right so 1.6 times sine 60 times 0 0.3 this is 0 0.40 um, this is right 42 0 0.42 kilonewton meter right so you will notice that actually uh, from the equation m is equal to f force times distance the greater the the distance actually the greater the, the force right so um, now let's move on to our third problem So problem number three, we are asked to find the moment at point O. So again, since this is um, this is in a diagonal direction, then that means there will be a a component that. Let's just use this. Right, so here's the component. That's the F Y. And the fx is this. Okay, so find the moment at point O. So fx, let's solve this first. fx, fx is just simply cosine or f cosine theta. That is two cosine thirty. Right, and our fy is. And our Fy is 2 sine 30. Right, so once again, recall that uh, all the y's are sine uh, and all the x's are cosines if our angle is from the horizontal axis or from the x axis. Right, so let's solve this 2 cosine 30. This is 1.73, and the other one is 2 sine 30. So this is 1. All right, so moment. Uh, the moment at O is equal to, so first let's let's solve for Fy, the moment produced by Fy so the, the Fy times the perpendicular distance right, so here's the 
perpendicular distance. So Fy is 1 times the perpendicular distance of 0 0.3. Right? So if this is positive, so the Fy will cause a positive rotation. Uh, I mean a clockwise rotation. Alright, so the fx, the fx has a perpendicular distance, then therefore it will produce a moment of point O, and it will produce, right, if we use the principle of transmissibility, here's the fy, right, so here's the fy, and here's the perpendicular distance, the 0 0.35. Alright, so fy, uh, so sorry, fx, so fx times this is fx times the perpendicular distance of 0 0.35 right and still positive so plus fx uh, that is 1.73 times what else uh, the distance 0 0.35 so therefore this is um, 1 times 0 0.3 plus 1.73 times 0 0.35 and this is 0 0.9 so 0 0.9 kilonewtons meters kilonewton meter alright so uh, you would see that the fx will produce a moment i mean all the components produce a moment because they have a perpendicular distance all right so last one is this so in this figure we have two forces and we are asked to find the moment at point o and we'll try to solve the moment at point b uh, sorry point b all right so if this is 1.5 then we need a m we need an angle right, so we need an angle here let's say the angle is 60 degrees and this one is 90 degrees all right so let's solve this so so the moment at point o is again there must be a component right so this component and that component so the moment of point O so for this this is 1.5 sine 60 and it produces a counterclockwise rotation so this one will will cause a counterclockwise rotation at point O right and this value this component is 1.5 sine 60 so 1.5 sine 60 and that's negative it's negative 1.5 sine 60 and the moment arm is 2 meters uh, let's just uh, write 2 ok next for this force this force uh, will not cause any moment at point O because it doesn't have any perpendicular distance right so next is this uh, so plus or minus because the two Newton force will cause a counterclockwise rotation so that's going to be minus again minus 2 the magnitude of the force times the moment arm right so here's the perpendicular distance which is 3 meters from point O to this that's 3 meters Right, so to do this, 1.5 sine 60 times 2. Right. So times negative 1 because it's negative. Minus 2 times 3, 6. This is 8.9. Right, so this is 8.9. Newton because that's our forces and meter and uh, by the way um, some problems um, 
might be that the units right here is in is in kilonewtons and this one is in newton or maybe in pound force then you just have to be consistent with the units right so if, it, if this one is in kilonewton this one is in newton then you just have to apply the prefix value okay next one is let's try to find the moment at point p so at point p if here's our reference point right if here's our reference point so um let's track the forces so this force will cause a positive um, direction a clockwise direction so that is two times the moment arm of right so what's the perpendicular distance that's three okay next is this this one will cause right this one this force component will cause a moment at point B because it has a perpendicular distance of six right, so plus this that's 1.5 cosine 60 right, times the moment arm of 6 okay next is this component right here produces a moment at point P about point P and it causes a clockwise rotation so that's plus plus 1.5 sine 60 and times the moment arm of 1 meter So one meter. Alright, so let's try to compute this. This is six plus one point five cosine sixty times six right plus one point five sine sixty times one meter. This is eleven point eight. 11.8 newton meter right and lastly let's do this what's the moment about point s so about point s if here's our point s this component right here this horizontal component does not produce any moment at point s so um, the only component will be the uh, the vertical components Right, so that's positive. So plus 1.5 sine 60 times the moment arm. So from point S to the to that force that is one meter. Right, and then from point S to this, so this force will produce a counterclockwise rotation. So that is minus the magnitude times the moment arm of three. So this will be 1.5 sine 60 times 1 meter minus minus 6 minus 6 2 times 3 that is 6 this is minus 4.7 right so that's that's the sample problem 3.4 right so that means I mean in, in summary of this uh, it's just about keeping track of forces and the perpendicular distance and when the force is let's say in a diagonal direction then we just have to resolve it into its components and then find the um, find the a perpendicular distance always right and course direction matters if it causes a clockwise direction or clockwise rotation or counterclockwise rotation All right so next one is this 
right so sample problem 3.5 calculate the moment about point O in all three in all the three axes right, so right now we'll be dealing with XYZ uh, meaning uh, the moment or the moment vector in a 3d space so here's our figure we have here an object or let's say a bar and it is fixed at point O and we have a loading right here 2.5 newtons here's our x and y uh, x y z axis so here's our x y and z axis so because of that loading and because it's it spans in the uh, three dimensions then maybe it can cause any moments in all the three axes so that means it can have uh, rotation in here or maybe here or maybe here right so we'll, we'll have to check depending upon the depending upon the situation right and here it is so basically all the forces or the force and the point of reference is just just lies in this um, xy plane right. so if that's the case then this means that So this one can be simplified into a 2D problem. So it's just x, y, right? So the moment, therefore, is just simply the moment at O is actually the moment he right here along the z-axis. So that's the um, that's the one causing the the rotation. I mean, in that axis. So the moment at O. So that's right at z at z axis is equal to 2.5 times the moment arm which is this one is three meters right, so this is three meters and that's gonna be seven point five Newton meters. I right, said so the moment at x. Right, so the moment at x, there is no moment at x because if we try to look at this in this view, This is the z axis, and here's the y axis. So at x axis there is no moment. Why? Because the force is along the uh, along this line. Therefore this is zero. Right next the moment at y axis so at y axis here there is no force along the z I mean, uh, there's no force along the z or the r along x, so therefore this will also be zero. Right, so we can check this if we draw. 
let's say we draw in this figure and then let's say here is our Z axis and here is our X axis this is point O right so there is no force because uh, the force is along the Y so it's just a point right here so you it will not cause any rotation along the Y axis okay so now let's solve this next problem so same um, actually it has the same figure same dimensions uh, same magnitude of loadings except that the loading is in, uh, instead of uh, at this point it's loaded at this point right so therefore it will cause rotation along the z and it will cause rotation along the x and along the y uh, th there's still no rotation right so let's do this so moment at x so let's try this moment about point O at X is equal to so at X let's draw this in in YZ plane. I think this can be in YZ plane. So here's the Z axis, here's the Y axis. And the loading is right here this is 2.5 right and the distance is 1 meter all right so let's solve that so 2.5 times the distance 1 meter so this is just 2.5 Newton meter Okay, so next is maybe we'll try to move this. Okay, next is the moment about O at Y axis. So at Y axis, um, it still be the same like this. except that the point right now is right here right so let's write m y so an m o at x next is MO at Z so for the Z axis uh, this will be the same So this one is zero, and the moment at Z 
is equal to so this one is 2.5 times the moment arm of 3 meters so this is 7.5 newton meter again right so that's the that's how we solve it in three dimensions right so for this case um, this can be resolved into the 2D plane problems because it just lies in the x y plane right so the rotation will be along the z axis and along x and along y there is no rotation because there is no force um, that has a perpendicular distance and in this case in uh, case number two so because the load or the force is shifted from this point to that point then that will cause a rotation right so if you if you can visualize it so here's our x-axis and here's going to be the rotation effect so it will cause a rotation about x because it has a perpendicular distance and about y there is no um, there is no rotation about y because there is no s force along the x z plane right so take note always that um, if we have if we want to take the moment about let's say about this about this axis then that means that the forces must lie on the x z plane so that we can have a moment in this y axis right and about um, the moment about z there is a moment about z uh, I, mean, I mean about point o on z axis because we have a perpendicular distance right so uh, I think the problem here is just simply to how to visualize this 